It's another Friday. I welcome you to my channel, Language Joes. You know, I always set a tone for a weekend. I want to, I presume or hope that we've all had a very wonderful week. For those who do not work on weekends, you're lucky you're going to have a fantastic time together with family, together with friends, either partying or just enjoying yourself at all, doing those things you'd love to do. And for those who work essential duties on weekend, I wish you all the best. So let me say good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everybody in all continents. My name is Josephine and my channel is Language Joes. On Tuesday, I teach core courses in philosophy, philosophy of religion, theology and religion proper. I am a digital professor, your online educator, and my channel is an academy of in-depth economy. But Fridays like this, I serve you what is called Friday tonic, because I talk on crucial important issues that are very critical to our lives. as parents, as guidance, as caregivers, or personally, issues we need to look into critically and take note. And that's why today I'm talking on an issue that if the victims are not helped on time, it has a long lasting consequences. If any child is abused and not helped at that age, as they grow up, the effects of that abuse stay with them, linger on for the rest of their lives. So I'll be speaking today on effects and types of child abuse. We have two Fridays in this month of surrender that is left, that's what I'm saying. Today's Friday, the 23rd, and we have one more Friday. So I'll be talking on child abuse for those two Fridays. Today I will be talking on the effects and types of child abuse and next Friday, I'm going to address 10 reasons why victims keep quiet, why, they, why the children do not disclose what's happening to them, and seven reasons or seven strategies we could use to help the victims. But today, I will only be highlighting on types and effects of child abuse. Before I continue, please let's join language Joes. I welcome you back to my channel. If you're joining me newly, my name is Josephine. I'm your online educator, your digital professor. And today, Friday, I'm talking on effects and types of child abuse. Child abuse is very rampant. <laughs> Don't underestimate the geographical, either width or length, or breadth 
of the spread of child abuse. It's nothing geographical, it's nothing that, oh, it happened. It's globally. It happens all over, worldwide. Parents, guidance, and caregivers just need to be very careful. There are pedophiles running around, and at times they're within your family. Wickedness runs in the veins of some people. Even with parents, one particular parent might be abusing your child. And that's why adults need to be very, very observant. You need to be observant to detect when the child is being abused. And you'll be helping not just that child, but even generations, because the, the consequences of an abuse can last till adulthood, till that person is married, and then carry over to another generation. And that is why it is very important to observe our children when they are young. And once the, you can see any trace, anything that can lead you to say, oh, this particular child is being abused, then you do exactly what you have to do to ensure you protect that child. Even the Bible says, let the children come to me. They are the apple of God's eyes. We are giving children to take care of because they are the apple of God's eyes. And if you take proper care of your children, you get the reward. I'm not talking about reward in heaven alone. You get the reward even in your heart. Children never forget any good deed. The same way they never forget any bad deed. Even if every other thing leaves their memory as they grow into adulthood. Good or bad deed remains in permanently in their memory. So, you know, in talking about some issues that are very like this, like child abuse that is very critical, I like people to have an in-depth understanding of my discussion. Hence, I share PowerPoint presentation to bring closer what I'm talking on. I don't want an excuse that you are not hearing me properly. I want you to also to follow me as I discuss this very critical issue. So give me a second while I share my PowerPoint presentation with you. Types and effects of child abuse. Let me start with the types of child abuse. Basically, all kind of abuses are regarded as maltreatment. It's a form of maltreatment. And they are classified into four. There's physical, there's emotional, there's sexual, and there's neglect. At times you might not see the effects of the other three. Physical abuse is so easy to discern with the bruises, with the lacerations on the child. You could see wounds. You could see bones, if it is bones. You could see lacerations, either healing or fresh. And you'll be able to say, oh, what's happening to this child? Who is building this child? Who has done this to this child? But when it comes to emotional, sexual or neglect, it's a little bit difficult to see. 
physical abuse involve eating, shaking, pushing, kicking, and burning. It's what we refer to as non-accidental injury. Yeah, you know, children love to play. When they play, either they are playing ball or they are doing something, they can fall down on their own. And when they fall down, they have bruises. But so, but physical abuse is non-accidental. That means that bones, that wound, that laceration is not caused by any form of accident. But brought about by an abuser of that child. Emotional abuse include belittling when you belittle somebody. Children are sensitive. Maybe you have more than two or just more than one child and you are always belittle one in front of the others as if he or she doesn't even know what she's doing or yelling at. Some people like to yell, shout on the children. It could cause emotional abuse on that child or rejecting the child. As a parent, you have a you have a, 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 a little conflict with your spouse, and you are eating it back on that child, an innocent child who doesn't even know what is happening. Or it's a kind of family house. One sibling is having an issue with another sibling, and you think the only way you could get it back at that sibling is to reject is our child rejecting a child or an orphan living with family you keep on shouting or yelling at him did i kill your parents you wicked one how can an innocent child be the one who had caused the death of the parents when you treat any child unfairly or blame a child for situations that are not even within the child's control. You know, ages, they vary. Toddlers and the maybe infants, toddlers. We have even seen some caregiver. Some people will drop their children at a caregiver. Maybe they will have to go to work. And do you know what that person does when they are not at all? either beat the child or push the child somewhere not feeding the child or checking the child there that they are missing and do all that kind of thing or when the child does something innocent child cannot carry something that is uh, heavier than that than than is or an age cannot leave something that they, that is heavier than their age and yet you are blaming that child for uh, letting that thing fall on the ground or something like that sexual abuse also is any sexual activity that provides sexual gratification for the abuser or financial benefit to the perpetrator we know about pedophiles. There's so many women in the world. Why go after underage children? Some people, they are not happy until they are defied five year old, six year old, seven year old, eight or nine. Children under 10 years who are just maturing, who are just being nurtured, who are not grown up enough for sexual activity even it could be among adults sexual abuse any sexual activity that is not consensual that is i mean the two parties have not agreed to it i mean it includes molestation rape prostitution you use force falsehood 
to lure girls or other people and use them for prostitution, for financial benefits. Pornography, child pornography, all kinds of pornography. Incest, with, I mean, it's nothing new. It's on, I mean, it's on social media. Some fathers who are having sexual relationship with their daughters. We've even had some grown up adults coming out boldly to say they were defied when they were young by their fathers. Exposure or any types of sexuality. And the fourth type of abuse, neglect. Some people don't know that neglect is a form of maltreatment. And neglect can be physical, it could be emotional, it even could be educational. When somebody is wrapped to start school and you are, be old, you are holding on to that person, not allowing that person to go to school, failure to take care for a child, the child cannot take care of, they can't take care of themselves alone. They want to take bath, you are asking, a two-year-old, yeah, 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 go into the bathroom. Go take care of yourself. How, how well can a two-year-old take bath in bathing themselves? How? Health care. Health care could be physical health care. It could be mental health care. You are not helping them with personal energy. You are not teaching them how to be clean. And that's why some of them even grow up with body odor. Because you like, you pile debts on them. You don't bathe them. You don't take care of their health. Any failure to take care of a child or any failure to protect any child from hazards. I've spoken on one of my videos or how to protect children from hazards, home hazards. You clutter your uh, room with furniture. You allow uh, uh, those to lie around. You throw you yourself because of your uh, unhealthy habits. There are cans, there are everything, there are even dangerous things that could harm children. You leave an iron lying openly, not unplugged, but even plugged. You say you have office or something, and any child can go there to bomb them. You leave chemicals, anything that could cause hazards, that could harm those children lying around. Or you, you do not give food, nutrition. You find some children that are malnourished. That's kind of neglect. So I want us to note that these abuses are in four types. Physical, emotional, sexual, and neglect. And all of these abuses, they have long-term psychological behavior effects. It costs low self-esteem or self-worth to the victims. Some victims have suicidal thoughts or actually even attempt to kill themselves. Addiction, it pushes some people to be taking drugs, cocaine, heroin, weeds, tramadol, whatever they call it, so many times, or alcohol. You find children who are not cold enough. And that is why in any alcoholic store, you must be able to prove you are an adult before they can say you are an alcohol. But when you neglect and you are you yourself you are an addict, you are an alcoholic addict, and you leave all your gin, your whiskey, and everything all around, you litter your whole room with your cigarettes and everything, you find these little children picking up those cigarettes to to smoke themselves, even though they don't know how to smoke. And then it exposes them to uh, smoke acid. Because once they smoke, they be yelling it. Instead of 
I'll tell you, it, it will be coming into the. Oh, well, not only that, they pick your bottle that is lying around of alcohol, and they too they become alcoholic. And these effects stay with them until adulthood. Some leave some to steal. When you neglect the child, you is malnourished. The child is hungry, has no food. That child will steal. Maybe steal money to go and buy food or steal food. In some African countries, where you steal publicly, they see you, they stole you today. And they even put tires on you and burn you. And some children, it's not that they want to steal. They steal because they, they need certain things. They have been abused to the extent that they are stealing. Lying. There is no child that is abused that doesn't lie. In fact, lying will become part of them. They will lie. To start with, they have to lie about that abuse. Because they don't want to be uh, further abused. So, they will lie. So, the lying has become part of them. And some self-harm, they harm themselves. Uh, all the criminal behaviors, so many criminal behaviors. And then, it affects their relational skills. You know, we have been children that are supposed to have relational skills and they're supposed to have like bonding skills. So, abused children, those victims, they lack relational skills. They lack ability to communicate. They are withdrawn. Sometimes some of them are withdrawn. Antisocial skills. Changes in affection. Some become aggressive. Some suffer extremely low self-esteem and if it is sexual <laughs> may have a sophisticated knowledge of sexual actions and body parts and be introducing to the peers lying on top of other children or wanting other children to do it or be talking about sex when they are too young to be exposed to that kind of thing excessively self-controlled con self some because it's the, like the opposite of uh, either withdrawn or aggressive then they have an excessive self-control they have trouble trusting anyone they can't trust anybody anymore they show signs of anxiety because of fear most of the time they don't know when if and once they see the abuser the, the consistency of anxiety. They are angry most times. Some are angry most times. And may have little interest in education. They don't want to learn. They shy away or never participate in activities. When parents or guidance is this kind of lack of relational skills, they should begin to observe those children more especially if you know that particular child wasn't like that before and has changed a kind of behavioral change lack of social bonding they lack ability to form close relationships really they become nervous some of fear if the abuse is taking place right in their home by any of the parents or by the two parents if they go if they go to get to school you will see that when it's time for them to go home and other children are happy to go home they have fear they don't want to go home overly compliant when he says overly compliant does everything just to avoid punishment does not expect love or support from anyone. They just go on their way. They, do, they know. They are, it, 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 says, it puts a kind of uh, stamp on them that, well, I'm not loved. Nobody loves me. Nobody wants to play with me. Nobody wants to surprise me. 
That's the thinking. That's the way. Difficulty in making friends. And that's why sometimes they are withdrawn because they don't know. They, they find it difficult to make friends. Some may even be forward or confrontational. Extremely needy. For those who are who whose abuses neglect, they fall into a category of extremely needy. They're angry, isolated, depressed, or suffer from inability to have true intimacy. May have trouble forming peer relationships. And that's why they have formed loving anybody. And when they grow into adulthood, anybody who first show a kind of love to them, they run into wrong hands, into marriage. And they go from one marriage to another marriage, seeking for love that was denied them when they were younger. May abuse drugs, become addictive to drugs, to alcohol, to all kinds of addiction. Even if it's sexual, they become sexually addicted. You just find them sleeping around anybody. They can't say no to anyone. They don't care who that person is. If it's a boy that is with sexual, and, uh, and it will be just, and, uh, in fact, it, it, it doesn't matter what sex. Either girl or, or boy or female or maybe they just be going up and down, sexually addicted anyone to just satisfy that sexual urge. And if it's a woman, no, we're not being dead dictionary because we're just sleeping around. No level, no class. It doesn't matter who that person is. And that's why you find some, even highly play when they're lucky and they, they finally get out of school, they have good jobs, they sleep with anybody. They are drivers, they are cooks, they are still work, they are gardeners, they have no one. They sleep around. They feel powerless over their body, that's it. Giving into further victimization or self-destructive behavior. This Friday, I will discuss the 10 reasons children do not disclose their abuse and seven strategies for helping victims. I want us to note these types of, sex, of abuse, physical, emotional, sexual, and neglect. I want us to be observant and watch our children very well to see if they have any problem, especially if it's a child that has been very proactive, very well, and when he changes behavior, withdrawn, isolated. Watch that child and know your child is not abused. Next Friday, when I'll be discussing 10 reasons why the victims do not want to disclose, or seven strategies we can help the victims. And we go into steps we could take in helping them. Have a very lovely Friday, a lovely weekend. And for those who are working, be good. Remain calm. Smile. Be happy. Be excited. Do not be frustrated. Do not be sad. Do not be worried. Do not be angry. I wish you all the best. Love you.